Shall we continue to trust in him and move forward? Shall we turn to the scriptures? We will continue with our theme that we were speaking about, what's there in a look. Genesis chapter 19, verses 15 to 26, we will read and we will continue with our theme, what's there in a look, and God willing, we will finish it up today. Take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. So it came to pass, when they brought him outside, that he said, Escape for your life, do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Then Lot said to them, Please know, my lords, indeed now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy when you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me and I die. See, now this city is near enough to flee to. It is a little one. Let, please let me escape there. Is it not a little one that my soul shall live? And he said, See, I have favored you concerning this thing also, in that I will not overthrow the city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do an anything until you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun had risen upon the earth when, the Lord, when Lot entered Zoar. Then the Lord rained the brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Lord out of heaven and he threw, overthrew those cities, all in the plain, all the inhabitants of the city, and what grew on the ground. But Lot, but his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Amen. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would fall afresh upon us, Lord. We thank you for the privilege of bringing your word. We pray that you will speak into our hearts, release grace, glory, anointing in this place. As the bread of life is broken, we pray that it will impart life and bring forth deliverance in every realms of our lives. Every resistance to the preaching of God's word, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Every critical spirit be stilled and Christ be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We will continue with the theme, what's there in a look? What's there in a look? Verse 17 goes like this, so it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed. 26, but his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. So what's there in a look? Well, we said that everything there is more than what meets the eye. So we looked at the different looks in the Bible. We looked how God calls us to the mountain experiences and how we need to respond to the mountain experience that God calls us into. And we asked ourselves, what is it that made Lot and his family haggle with the angel of God. Four instructions were given, as we read in 17. One, escape for your life. Do not. Second, do not look behind, nor stay anywhere in the plain. And finally, the fourth one, escape to the mountains. Four clear instructions. But we see that Lot haggled with the angels of God. And instead of going higher up into the mountains, he settled for the plains. Quite often, God is calling every one of us to a higher experience, to an elevated experience, to a spiritual elevation, to a spiritual revelation, but we settle for the plains because we think that we cannot go up higher. But if God is calling us to go come up higher. Or if his instruction is to go up 
higher, he will give us the grace and the strength to go up higher. Praise the Lord. Why is it that Lot and his family lingered? The Bible says they lingered. They lingered because they could not understand the sense of urgency. Praise the Lord. They underestimated the sense of urgency. In other words, they did not understand or comprehend what was about to happen. Praise the Lord. Quite often, when we are out of touch with what God wants to do or what God is doing, we do not understand the sense of urgency. How better can we illustrate other than uh, what happened recently in an incident? A flight that was landing in uh, Dubai International Airport got on fire. And as they opened all the emergency exits and people were like jumping left and right trying to get off the plane, there was a video taken where they showed there were some people who were trying to get their carry-on bags before they jumped off the plane. Literally, the plane is on fire. And people are just using every exit doors that they can find, emergency exit. But there were a few guys who were trying to grab, push people around, trying to reach their carry-on before they exit out of their plane. It definitely shows that they did not understand the sense of urgency. As children of God, you and I, we need to understand the sense of urgency in the spiritual realm, in what God wants to do in us and what is God doing around us. And if we see that this family was totally out of touch with God, therefore, they could not understand. They did not have a sensitivity to God and what God wanted to do in that city. So shall we move forward? Number one, today as we move in, we are going to look in two major things. Number one, the Bible says, Jesus himself said, remember Lot's wife. Okay. What is it that the lesson that we learn from this? Number one is... It's easy to get into Sodom, but it's very hard to get out of Sodom. Number one, it's easy to get into Sodom, but very hard to get out of Sodom. Praise God. Sodom is a picture of the world. It's easy to get into the world. It's easy to be lured into the world, but actually to pull yourself out of the world it's not as easy as getting into the world. That's what the Bible teaches us. When you see that, we will understand three things. Number one, the appeal of Sodom. The appeal of Sodom. Sodom has an appeal to itself. Praise the Lord. Sodom has a glitter and a glamour that attracts people to it. Lot, we see the progression in his life. Lot and his family was allured into Sodom. It starts, interestingly, by one look. The Bible says, Lot looked into the plains of Sodom. So it starts with a look. And the next thing that the Bible says is that he gained the grasslands of Sodom. As it's recorded in chapter 13, verse 10. It doesn't end there. It starts very subtle. It starts very, very subtle, you know. And it had, he has all the reason to move on because of the abundance of cattle. It looks so legit and it was legit, praise God. So slowly but steadily, he gained the grasslands of Sodom. 13, 12, he says, it says, then he pitched his tents outside Sodom. But it doesn't stop there. He moves on, the Bible says, only to move, only to eventually move into Sodom. Chapter 14, verse 12. 
The next thing that we find in chapter 19 is he's found sitting at the gates of Sodom. In the olden times, in the Old Testament, the gates of a city was a place where the council of elders came and met together. They were the leaders who made decisions. So Lot, who had started his journey slowly but steadily, he had progressed in life. He pitched his tent towards Sodom. He was outside of Sodom. Then he got into Sodom. Eventually, he rose in ranks to the place that he was one of the elders in Sodom. Very much aware of what was going on in Sodom. Very much aware of the sin that was in Sodom. Praise God. The progression, the allure, oh hallelujah, the appeal of Sodom. So what are we saying? It is easy to get into the world. It is easy to get entangled with the world, but it is very hard to get out of the world. Praise God. We ought to remember as God's people that any move towards worldliness and wickedness in any regards, in any realms, would only subject us not only to just simple compromise in life, but eventually it leads to devastating effects upon our lives, upon our family, upon everything that we make in our lives. And how much this family, it teaches us. No good can come from moving in to the world, to the worldly lifestyle. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the world and his desires will pass away, but he who does the will of God shall live forever. James puts it like this. The friendship with the world is enmity with God. That's what the Bible says. Praise God. You know, the world has way of appealing to us. And it functions in four major objectives. It, it has four major offers to everyone who lives in this world. When the Bible talks about the world, it has three basic meanings. One, world as in the inhabitants in the world. Number two, world as in this universe. Number three, when the Bible talks about, uses the term word, it talks about an anti-God system. Praise the Lord. A system that opposes God. And it uses four different offers to appeal to you and to me. Number one, the first offer that the world makes to you and to me is an offer to become prosperous. In other words, to become wealthy, to become affluent. The offer of materialism of the world. It has a pull. It pulls us. Without our knowledge, we get pulled into it. Praise God. Who doesn't like wealth? Who doesn't like riches? Everyone likes it, but there is a trap to it. And we have to become people who are wise. Even when we become rich, we have to be good stewards like Abraham. Abraham was a rich man, yet the riches did not take hold of his affiliation, allegiance to God. Praise God. So the world makes an offer to us. Says, hey, I can make you prosperous. Come, accept my offer. You know, regardless of how, the means. Don't worry about the means. Come, come with me. And the world pulls us with the offer of wealth. With the offer of becoming prosperous in every round. The second offer that the world makes is the offer to become popular. Praise God. Popularity is a big thing. People want to be known. People want their names everywhere. Even in the Christendom, you see that there is a desire and a drive to make themselves popular, to make themselves famous, you know. People start organization so that they can put their names on it. They want to be 
popular. They want to become the who, the, the who's, and they want to become the number one. They want to project themselves. Praise the Lord. So popularity is one offer that the world gives to us to pull us in. Praise the Lord. One is becoming prosperous. There is nothing wrong in becoming prosperous as long as we are still linked with God. The number two is becoming popular. Praise the Lord. Doing everything to becoming to become popular. People do it very subtle. In the Christendom, they do it very subtle. You see how people start panicking when they are not mentioned. You see when people start panicking when they are not acknowledged. It's so obvious as you see in the Christendom. Praise the Lord. This is something that the world used as a trap even in the Christendom. Third, you know, Prosperity, popularity, third one is power. The power to control, the power to manipulate, the power to maneuver things and to use people and settings to glorify self. This is what the world offers. Number four is the passionate pleasure that the world offers, the passionate pleasure, sensuality the world offers and tries to pull the godly also, praise the Lord. So it's easy to get into Sodom because all these different forces are working against us trying to pull us in. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a Canadian rock band that goes like this. If it goes, they have a song like this. If it feels good, do it even if you shouldn't. You know, that's the motto that the world uses. If it feels good, do it even if you shouldn't. You know, so even when you know that it is wrong, there is an appeal to do it because it feels good. That's why the Bible says it very clearly. The world and his desires will pass away, but he who does the will of God shall live forever. Praise the Lord. So the allure of Sodom. Next, the hold of Sodom. Once you're allured in, once you are allured in, then Sodom or the world holds us down so that we cannot come out of it. The hold of Sodom. Those who quit walking in the will of God. Listen to, the, listen to me. You might have a good start in your life, you know, but if you stop walking in the will of God, you will lose hearing the voice of God. If you stop walking in the will of God, you will pretty soon stop hearing the voice of God. We lose the sensitivity to the spirit of God when we resist the will of God and the voice of the spirit of God. Eventually what happens is Sodom will bind us down and will have a hold upon our life. Why do you think Lot was reluctant to live, leave Sodom? Why do you think he hesitated? Why do you think he haggled with the angels because of the hold that was upon him? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We see God was merciful to them by literally pulling them out. The disobedience of Lot's wife is also a lesson to stop longing for the past and start looking forward to the future which God is calling. Praise God. Yes, this morning God is calling us to step into the future and forget about the past. But we see there was the pull of Sodom. Number one, we said the allurement of Sodom, the hold of Sodom, and then the pull of Sodom. And the pull was so strong that even after negotiating a deal 
with the angels, we see the pull was so strong that Lot's wife, she felt it was okay to look back. And she stands as a monument of a, to a divided heart. Listen to me. Lot's wife stands as a monument to a divided heart. Halfway here, the other half there. Praise God. Well, we need to realize the Bible clearly speaks against having allegiance to both God and mammon. To having allegiance to both the word of God and the world. We cannot have allegiance to both the word and the world. Praise God. If we continue to, to travel in two boats, we will end up in big time trouble. You know, what a somber reminder Lot's wife is that God will not tolerate a double lifestyle from those who profess his name. Listen, let me remind you, let me say this again. This is a somber reminder to everyone that God will not tolerate a double lifestyle from those who profess his name. Praise God. Those who are trying to live in both the worlds must make a decision in their lives. They have to make a choice in their lives. Unless we are willing to cut ourselves clear off from the world, we will find ourselves in an awkward position. So, Lot's wife reminds us that it's easy to get into the world, but it's very hard to get out of the world. Look at the assignment that was given to this two, angel, two angels. One, extract Lot and his family out of Sodom. Number two, the destruction of Sodom. Praise God. Now, coming to the next part, you know. So, you could be linked to a righteous man and still not be changed. What does Lot's wife remind us? You could be linked to a righteous man, yet not be changed. Now, you can use that interchangeably also. You could be linked to a righteous woman and yet not be changed. Just because we are associating ourselves, we have an affiliation with, we have an allegiance with, people who are righteous does not necessarily mean that we can be changed. That's what Lot's wife reminds us. She was connected to Lot whom the Bible calls as a righteous man, you know, but that did not change her in a way to completely obey the angels of God. What a sad thing, you know. So we have to come to grips from the scripture that only a personal encounter with Jesus Christ can truly make us righteous. Praise the Lord. Only an encounter with Jesus can totally transform us and change us. Praise God. Regardless of how long we are affiliated or associating ourselves with people who are righteous, that necessarily would not change our lives. I could be born and raised in a Christian family. I could have godly parents. I could have godly mentors. All these things have a certain level of influence upon my life. But let me tell you, smear association with a righteous person will not give me the kind of mileage that I need to reach my eternal destiny with Christ 
Jesus. Let me repeat it. Hallelujah. Mere association with righteous people would not give us the kind of mileage that we need to reach our eternal destiny with the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us need to have a personal encounter with our God. Praise God. Every one of us need to have a personal encounter with Lord Jesus Christ. Only he can change us from inside out. Only Jesus, only the Spirit of God, only the Word of God can eradicate the love of the world from within my heart. Praise God. Hallelujah. The stronghold that the world has in people's heart can only be knocked out by an encounter with God. Praise God. You see a stark difference between Abraham and Lot. Praise God. Abraham had multiple encounters with God. Lot probably just picked on what Abraham had in his life. Every one of us should crave for a personal encounter with God. We cannot run on yesterday's strength. We cannot run on past experience. We cannot go forward simply by associating ourselves with good people. They are good. Good associations are healthy, but it would not give us the kind of mileage that we need to make it in this world. Praise God. Lot was a righteous man, but that did not affect the outcome in Lot's life. Praise God. Everyone has an outcome when it comes to our future, when it comes to eternity with Christ. Our outcome is directly linked to our relationship with our God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, it's interesting when you think about this for a moment. Lot in the Bible is pictured as a righteous man. You know, this is how Peter puts it. Second Peter 2, 7 and 8. And if you rescued Lot, a righteous man, who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that the righteous man living among them, day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. Listen, Lot never felt comfortable in Sodom. Listen to this. Lot never felt comfortable in Sodom. This is what the Spirit of God puts it. He says, day in and out, the man was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. But that did not help him to make a clear cut choice in his life. Yet the Bible calls him a righteous man. Praise God. You know, when you see the limited things that's written about Lot, you and I, if we were given the choice to give him a tag, we would not call him a righteous man. His choices did not, does not say to us that he was a righteous man. You know, his offer of his daughters to the men of Sodom does not make us feel that he was a righteous man. The act in the cave, even though he was not conscious about it, does not make us feel that he was a righteous man. Yet, there is something here that I want you to carry it with you. You know, only God knows our heart. Praise God. Regardless of our failures in life, listen to me, church. Regardless of your failures in life, regardless of what has happened in the past, only God knows our heart. People evaluate us based on what they see on the outside. People put tags on us based on our past actions. People want to call us names based on the failures in our lives. But only God sees our heart, the struggle in our hearts, 
the inabilities that people go through or the conflict that they are experiencing and the pull they are trying to, to, to how they are pull, trying to pull themselves out of the predicaments that they are in. Praise God. I want to assure you this morning that God does not look at you and me the way the world looks. Praise the Lord. This new year, I want you to look at these words very carefully. Even when the world draws a very grim picture of yourself, praise God. The world may have a very negative picture of you in their mind. But let me tell you, God knows your heart. Praise God. He looks into your heart and his Praise God. His, when he examines us, praise God. Hallelujah. And the result or the outcome, the report that he gives about you and me will be something that the world probably will have a hard time to accept. Even the church might have a hard time to accept. But let me tell you, when God looks into our heart, he knows who we are. So this is the word for someone in the house today. If we had a bad past, and if we have truly repented of our bad past, regardless of how bad it was, regardless of how sinful it was, there is hope for every man and woman who comes to God. Hallelujah. God can do a number for you. God can do a work for you. God God can do an act for you. God can do a deeper, wider, higher work for you that can change everything about your past. Maybe the world has written you off, but let me tell you, God can do a new work in you. He can do give you a new future. Praise God. A new hope this morning. Hallelujah. So if you had a bad past or a failure in the past, don't linger on it. What God is telling you is forget that past. Don't look back. Press forward. He's calling you into the mountain experience. Praise God. Don't don't linger on what has happened in the past. If you lost something in the past, everything that you have built, if you lost them, listen, God can still rebuild things for you. When he tells you to forget the past and move forward. You move forward in faith. God can give you a new start in life. Praise God. Quite often, you know, people yearn for the past with a dismal view of future because they can't come to grips that what is left behind, praise God, You know, that God can do something better than what's left behind. Praise God. That's what happened to Lot's wife. Shall we, as children of God, believe in a God this new year that when we bid farewell to our past, regardless of what it is, praise God. If it is a sinful lifestyle, if it's a habit that you cannot kick by yourself, Trust in God. When you bid farewell to it, praise God. If there is anything in the past that's haunting you, where you feel that you cannot build a life besides your past this morning, praise God. Trust in God. He can give you a better future. Praise God. Come out of that old lifestyle, even if that means that we have to bid farewell to it. Praise God. Maybe Lot's wife did not have faith in a God who, would, who was able to provide for them even in the future. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen. Perhaps she looked back because of not only the pull, she probably could not envision what the future is going to be. Praise God. If you link your future with Jesus, let me tell you, no matter what you leave behind, what God can do for you is greater provided you listen and obey what God tells you. When you look at Lot's life, 
You know, you don't see, you know, a bright prospect there. That's because the man haggled and bargained and settled for the second best, which was the worst. Praise God. Let's move on. Praise God. When we come to Jesus, he gives us grace and mercy. Listen, grace and mercy. Grace for what? Grace for a new start in our lives. Grace for a new powerful beginning in our lives. And mercy for what? Mercy to forget the mistakes that we have made in the past. Praise God. We are one that looking back at our past provisions or mistakes can cause us loss and we can fall out of grace. Just like the angels pleaded with Lot and his family to get out, out of Sodom. This morning, the Spirit of God is urging us to get out of the worldly anti-God system. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look what the Spirit of God says. The clarion call is clear. Come out of her and touch no unclean thing. Separate from her. Praise the Lord. The key to rejecting and resisting the allurement of the world is to look to Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. We can do it by ourselves. When the world tries to pull us back, when the world tries to hold us back, praise God. Remember, the key to rejecting and resisting the pull of the world is to simply to look at Jesus Christ. Like Isaiah 45, 22, God says, Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Praise God. Dear friends, this morning as we have entered into a new year, look forward, not backward. Praise God. Don't dwell on the past, but look forward. Praise God. Go to the heights that God is asking you to come. Praise God. I have shared this illustration in the church in the past, but I believe it's worth repeating. And I'm going to repeat this. You know, in the American, great American, North American wilderness, there are two birds. One is a huge one and one is a very little one. One is the vulture and the second one is the hummingbird. The vulture looks for dead flesh it looks for carcass it looks looks for dead bodies of animals and feeds on it while the hummingbird the little bird it travels through the wilderness looking for blooms looking for flowers in the wilderness and feeds on it they both are birds which live in the same environment same habitat but one lives on feeding on what is of the past. And the other one is always looking for something fresh, something new. Praise the Lord. You know, we have a choice when we live in this world. We don't want to be people who go backwards, feed on that which is of the past, but we want to feed on that which is fresh, Praise God. While the vulture fill themselves with what is dead and gone, the hummingbird lives on what is new and fresh. Each bird finds what it is looking for. We all do, don't we? Praise God. If you look for the past, if you look for the failure, if you look for that which is sinful, you will find it in this world. But if you look for that which is new, that which is fresh, that which is holy, that which is righteous, that which is pleasing to God, you will find that as well. Praise God. What are we looking for? Praise God. What are we looking at? The Bible says, 
look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. What's there in a look? Everything. Praise God. Your look will determine your destiny. Your look will determine your destination. Praise God. We are not people who look back, who shrink back, who's pulled back, but we are people who look forward. We are people who look to Jesus, glean our strength by looking at Jesus and pressing forward. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is calling us to the mountain experience. Shall we rise up to the mountain experience? Shall we rise up to the new elevation? Shall we rise up to for the new revelation that God has for us? We don't want to go into the history as a person who had a divided heart and stands as a monument for a divided heart. Could not pull ourselves out of the past. No, no, no. We are not people who are going to be stuck in between. But we are people who will press forward and gain. Do great things from God. May God bless us with this word. Praise God. Shall we pray? We are going to look to the Lord in prayer. We're going to sing a song. After that song, we will pray and we will conclude this service.